Yo, what's going on? So what is it like to develop for iOS? I developed for iOS for a couple of years. I started out as a web developer and I thought, yeah, iOS can't be that difficult. I saw some tutorials, they had Xcode open. Xcode is the IDE that you use to build iPhone apps. And they were dragging things over from the code. I thought, yeah, I've done some jQuery. I've done quite a bit of jQuery. This shouldn't be too much of a problem for me. I knew it would be a challenge, but I was not prepared for the learning curve I had to go through to grasp it. Building an iOS app is a completely different mindset. You're bombarded with a lot of different concepts and it's a lot to hold in your head. Everything in iOS is pretty much an object. So you need to be a good object oriented programmer to really feel at home. So be prepared for that. If you're a web developer moving into mobile development, you're going to be feeling like a noob again. And no one likes to feel that way. When you feel accomplished at something, it's a little uncomfortable, more than uncomfortable sometimes to go to feeling like a bit of a baby again. The key though is to persevere with it and just know that it's most likely going to be frustrating. With web development, you need to know a little bit of everything. You need a breadth of knowledge. With iOS though, it's very focused. I'm going to use a paragraph that I found in this blog post to help me make this point. While it's true that mobile developers tend to stay mobile developers, although switching from iOS to Android can be quite smooth, there are benefits to the singular nature of iOS development. The web development world is peppered with a variety of competing technologies. Ember, Node, Angular, Rails and more are all vying for developer adoption. This is exciting but it can also prove fractious when companies start taking sides. iOS on the other hand is much more consistent. iOS development will always be iOS development. Even the seemingly tectonic shift from Objective-C to Swift is really just the latter building on the principles from the former. So with iOS, I did feel very kind of looked after in a way, knowing that things aren't all of a sudden going to go in a completely different direction. With web development, there's lots of different frameworks vying for market adoption. Now, Swift isn't entirely stable right now. Swift is the language that is used to build iOS apps. Some developers are still using Objective-C and they're holding out for the release of Swift 4, which will most probably be released this September. Now, what does this mean? It means that it can be challenging to get hold of up-to-date tutorials to build out the functions that you want for your app, especially if it has some complex functionality. The app that I developed wasn't all that complicated, but there were still some breaking changes when new versions of Swift would be released. And it was very difficult to get a hold of good up-to-date tutorials. On the other hand, with Android, Java's been around for a very long time. So in terms of tutorials, the cream really has risen to the top. So it's a lot easier to get a hold of good Java material. Do you need a degree to develop for iOS? No. There are plenty of iOS developers who don't have a degree. Yes, a lot of them do. A lot of computer science graduates move into mobile development. At Stanford, they even teach iOS development there. I made a video about asking that question, do you need a degree? So go check that out for my in-depth thoughts on that. Right now, iOS developers get paid a little bit more than web developers, apparently. Well, it's because there's a short supply of very talented iOS developers right now. So that's something to keep in mind. It can be quite lucrative, at least right now, but no one knows whether hybrid development is going to become more popular. Now, I said on a recent video that React Native, I described it as being hybrid. Yes, it does compile into native Swift code, but if you talk to iOS developers, they don't consider these things truly native. They look upon them as second-class citizens. But the point I'm making, though, is 
a lot of companies right now are moving to the hybrid approach and using things like React Native. I was listening to a podcast, they were talking about Wix. Wix, they have, I think they're valued at almost a billion dollars and they still chose to use React Native over going completely native iOS and native Android. So that tells you something. I think it's very exciting right now developing for Apple because you've got the Apple Watch, you've got Apple TV, so if you're after a new challenge, then you may find this very exciting. I did, however, I felt like I had a lot of web development skills that I wasn't able to leverage. Now I've gone to learning React. My goal now is to release a React Native app and I'm feeling much more at home. I can leverage all of those skills now. So I'm feeling a lot better about that. Anyhow, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you got something from that and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Before you go, let me just share these resources with you. When I was building my app, I used three websites and they were devslopes.com. It's Mark Price's company. He's a stand-up dude. He's super cool. He's an iOS developer, an entrepreneur. He makes great content. He's got a team of developers with him now, so it's well worth taking a look at. The other one is raywindelick.com. Again, it's a large team of developers contributing to this. There's plenty of videos, free uh, blog post tutorials, video courses, PDFs. The next one, teamtreehouse.com. They really helped me to understand the Swift syntax. They're a big player. They've had, I think I read somewhere, they've had over a quarter of a million students come through here. They have, for $25 a month, you get an intermediate iOS development track, a beginner track, there's other videos on there. They now have tech degrees. They didn't have these when I was starting out. And they have on here some real world projects Look at this one, it's a 40 hour project and it's using a NASA API to display imagery from Mars or Earth. So there's a free trial uh, for the basic package and the tech degree. I've left my affiliate link in the video description. Thanks for supporting what I do here on YouTube and I'll catch you on the next one, peace.